Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Nerd back News again. Now on Wednesdays. Yep, we're back again, and it is October 23rd when we're recording this. And hopefully yeah. you're watching it live, but if you're not, it's because we pre, I mean, not pre-record, we, yeah. we post show yeah, so this sometimes show. Sometimes we'll do a rerun. Yeah, as many times as we can. And so. we keep getting residuals for that. <laughs> Every time there's a rerun, you know, we get that. Yeah. We get half of what we normally make. That's, that's 50%, right? 50%. 50% off the top. So that's really good. It's yeah. a great deal that we got there. <laughs> well, so you're watching we Nerd News Now. And uh, this is a show where the three of us will just be talking about yep. nerd news, what we learned over the past week in Nerdland. Yep. And I'm uh, Bob Snow with Design Factory. And my name's Jim Korea with Blue Marquee Consulting. And you are going to be meeting Larry Talbot pretty soon. He'll be yeah. coming out. He's right now doing the production. Yeah, we're going to do the normal swap over. Yeah. So what do you have to talk about? I wanted to talk about some of the things that uh, ran into problems when it came to uh, website maintenance and management. Oh, okay. Something yeah. that I learned and I, I didn't realize. And some things I learned. You know? And then uh, how about yourself? You got? Um, I got a couple little things. That, back to my little robots and things like that. So it's a real short little... That little clip where I forgot what we even talked about. We were going to show the one video first, or I've got a couple to show them. All right, yeah. and then I'll, I'll show you an update on the uh, latest Google uh, street tours that I've done. Oh, for, cool. That'll be good. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and start with that. I, okay. I'm going to um, pull up on my computer screen. So if you have been watching the show, you'll notice, you'll know that I've recently been certified as a Google trusted photographer. And as a Google trusted photographer, I have the ability to interact with Google Maps. Now, what that means is I can go inside of businesses and do the same street tour that Google has on Google Maps, where you can go from one place to the other inside of a business. Uh, by, uh, with the certification they gave me, I got a special login. I can log into Google Maps and I can link those uh, businesses with the street view. That's and cool. It, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pull up my website. But um, so far, I've done three, and, and matter of fact, that was my requirement in order to Actually, become partially. I think that's my laptop. Yeah, so um, I had to do three to become partially certified. Oh, okay, right. And then now that I'm partially certified, I guess all that gets me is the ability to say that I'm truly a Google trusted photographer. Sure. And the next seven that I do has to um, go through a quality like, control like a process. View or something. Yeah, so. Now, my computer might be a little slow. It might be even be easier to open it up on your computer because I'm noticing that um, even though I am connected to the Internet, it's like dog slow. I'm okay. using... A, so where am I going here? JimCarrillo.com. So I'm using a, a ThinkPad, IBM ThinkPad. And while this is definitely a workhorse, I would say this is probably about a five-year-old computer. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from the standpoint of computers, computers... They, they don't, computers don't get old per se. It's that programs get updated, especially operating systems and Flash and Adobe and all these okay. little things running in the background. So that's usually what makes computers run slower than the first day you bought them is because this computer is stuck in time. It was produced about five or six years ago. Larry, was it seven or eight? Probably seven, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Um, but the programs that are on it are continually updating with Microsoft Windows updates. Yeah. So the programs are getting faster. All right, so what you're seeing here is the um, bubble street view. Now, normally what would happen is it would show the, the street view right here in the center. Oh, there it goes. It's switching over. Um, oh, okay. And this is embedded into my website. And what, what we'll do is let it refresh. All right, so I'm going to control it. What makes the Google Street View a little different than just a picture is it allows the customer the ability to interact with it. And when I mean customer, I mean the person on the website. So you can see how I can rotate around. And I can look outside and all that stuff. Now, also the thing that is unique to Google is these little arrows. They call these chevrons. And with these chevrons, you can now walk throughout the, this little um, tour. And you'll notice that I got another chevron right here. So it's showing up and I'm going to go out to the outside. And this is where I was able to integrate it with Google Maps. Do you see how this chevron, the next one has a double one? Oh, right. It's actually going to connect to Google, Google Maps. Google Street Map. Yeah. Street and so view. now this is the car. Remember that car that drives around? Yeah. 
And if we rotate around, you'll be able to see that I can go back inside. So there's bubbles again. And I can decide, hey, let's go inside bubbles. See, there's my little double arrows. And go inside. Now, you know Amy Aochi, Bob? Yeah. Well, she happened to be at Bubbles when I was doing these um, oh, cool. things. Yeah. So I told her to get in the picture and let's see if we can find her. Oops. Uh, let's go up here. Now, a question I have about that is uh, normally they, you have to blur people's faces out. Uh -huh. um, since you know her and she gave you permission, you can leave that. Uh, the person's face, or is there a... I wish. Oh, you still have to... Yeah, okay. so in so this So that's case, a Google thing it's, that you... This is all done through Google. So Google doesn't care who I know or what I can do. Right. They, they've got strict regulations. Yeah, okay. Matter of fact, this Bubbles uh, project that I did, it got rejected four times. I put... It was a lot of time and energy into trying to figure this stuff out. Four times it got rejected. Finally, I, I, they even said to me, hey, you can't keep on submitting this. You have to go get help on this one. So I had to go to, they oh, call them okay. a program manager. So I called up my program manager, and she couldn't figure it out either. And so I explained to her each time I got it kicked back what I had done. And then she was like, oh. And she looked at one of the pictures, mm -hmm. had a license plate that wasn't blurred. Oh, okay. And wow. I, I think, you know, if, um, based upon, I, I, what I recognized is all of these things that I submit, they get reviewed in the night. And it, they start reviewing it on Sunday, and they, they don't work on Friday. So that tells me it's across the international dateline somewhere. Oh, I get you. So okay. it might be out in India. You know? So I know that they're, they're across the international dateline, and they're about 12 hours off from oh, us. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's interesting. So uh, Google's obviously outsourced the review. So that's... Um... But that's Amy, and then Lindsay's in there. But... Uh, the, the concept behind this is the ability to allow people that aren't familiar with your business to come, to come in, in and, and see your business. See, like, this one's great for bubbles because, I mean, it, it's nice, clear pictures. Yeah, and you, you know exactly what to expect. Yeah. So if you're planning a party at bubbles, you can look at that and say, oh, you know, I think yeah. I want to put my food on this area. Or and, like and then as far as your side of it being the photographer, I would say... You definitely don't want to go in there during a busy time of. The I mean, only, you yeah. could, but it makes a lot of work because then you're. Puts more work on me. Plus, people are moving around and it's going to be a now, little inconsistent. Now, what we're going to be doing for Rosie's at the beach as well as um, the cigar shop. Oh, right. So, the cigar shop has 14 owners, I guess you'd call them partners. Oh, partners, right. So, we're going to schedule it where all 14 partners are in the bar. Oh. and. When I'm taking the pictures, you, like you said, right. everybody's got to stay absolutely still. All right. Now, if you scroll down on this page, I want to show you a little bit about one of these. So I wanted to do design salon, and she wanted people in the picture. This was the first time I did it with people in the picture, so I didn't know what to expect. And you can see uh, she's all ghosted up. Right, because she moved. Because yeah. she moved, right. Also, you had the, the little tricky is... Oh. Catching yourself in the mirror, that's going to be... So design, yeah, I think, did I tell you about that one? How I'm, no. So I had to, this one, I, I had to do it and I started all over again. I had to do all of them oh. because all these mirrors, you can see my camera is right here. Right. What you can't see is that I'm ducking down so I'm, oh, behind, right. <laughs> I'm like hiding and, and uh, uh, that was really hard. So I That's think, probably why she moved. It's like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I think if I were to do this over again, um, I would have told her, uh, I would have said, okay, everybody, I'm taking a picture now. And then uh, I would have taken my picture and then moved. And what you're seeing, by the way, and it is, um, and you can come back to me, Larry. So what it is is it's a fisheye lens. So the fisheye gets like a full view. But I have to take four camera shots. So at 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 right. degrees. Each camera shot takes three pictures, one normal exposed, one oh, underexposed, and one overexposed. And then what Google software will do is it will recognize out of those three exposures, what's the best lighting to give the right. highest quality image. Right, right. Well, because it's taking those three pictures, that's why you're seeing the people uh, moving. What is, what's the resolution of the pictures that you're uploading? Uh, 15 megapixel. So they're big. They're huge, yeah. Huge files, wow. Yeah. It's so like, they obviously have some sort of compression. They're though, compressing right? and yeah. all that stuff, right. But so you're not sending already mm -mm. compressed down. I mean, it, it, the... I really am, um, uh, I guess I want to say happy with their 
protocols that they've established. Right. I mean, it's to the point to where um, they can they can read the information from the camera because the oh, camera right. incorporates it's that in the that image, in, so they yeah. can tell if it's it's been edited. It's got that metadata. Yeah. Stuff that, so yeah. all those things are really good controls, and you have to make sure that you're you've made all your settings to upload in full size, and all right. you know, um, so really nice. Oh, here you get somebody sleeping. I, and yeah. actually, the uh, your cameras, you did a pretty good job of jumping out of the way. Yeah, you. you almost don't notice the camera there. No. And this one, so. But yeah, that, these were hard because when I went back and looked at them all, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm right there in the middle of the shot. Yeah. You know, uh, like, I can't have that. Bubbles had a big mirror too, and I got caught in yeah, that. Yeah, they've got that. So, so that's what I've been up cool. to. I, and I'm I'm happy. Um, I went to Jeff Burroughs, and he has a relatively small shop. He's the cigar shop. Yeah. And um, I was really happy with this one because he said, uh, how much does it cost? And I said, well, it's, it's for your size of a shop. It's $250. And he said, $250? And I'm like, oh, God. You know, That's I was, cheap. No, I, I was oh, expecting him to say, what the heck? I'm not yeah. paying to it. But, uh, yeah, in fact, he said, I would have expected to pay much more. And, you know, I'm glad for that. I, I don't need to make any more money than um, – then, you know, yeah, yeah. When I, I, I know what my hourly rates are, and I know how much time it takes me to do and it. When so. people realize it's a great deal, I'm fine you with get that. more. Uh. You know, especially Dan Morgan Hill. I mean, it, he's going to talk to somebody else, another merchant. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So, and then I talked to Marty Cheek with the Morgan Hill Life, right. and because um, I thought it was kind of, you know, me just loading them up on my website. That's oh, boring. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he said that he was going to um, have a page for me to just load all these up on. And you, you do the web page for them. Yes. So that's right now clients. working on it. We're in a, kind of in a, getting into second phase of it because the. Well, uh, the first phase. Now the newspaper's really off and running pretty good. They're doing pretty good, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. So what time we got here? It's we got a few minutes. Yeah, a few more minutes. All right. So did you want to come, go into your area, or do you want me to talk about that um, one problem I was having with the? Let me show these things real quick because it's going to be short. I was just. Last week I showed some uh, some of the new robots that are coming out for more military, like the pack mule one, and then the the ones that were running at what, almost 30 miles an hour. That's just crazy. Yeah. But um, I'm going to show some of these flying robots that they uh, actually imitate birds the way they fly with the wings. Yeah. But before I go to that, I was going to show another one. This is on my computer, so I'm going to play this one. They've got you've seen. Um, these uh, robots that that are walking now, biped. And they look they look like robots walking. Well, this one they've actually put in movement, so they look more human-like when they walk. So I'm going to play this. Uh, let me see if it'll go. You going to do uh, sound? Uh, I don't think the sound's too important. But, but it starts out a little stiff, but then it starts. So they're not real stiff, you know, like. Uh, That's pretty good. Although uh, it is annoying how loud it is. What's that? It's annoying how loud it is. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, that's pretty, you know, they really got into how they, um, when I was reading how they did it, so they just, mimicked how humans walk. So the way that they got it to walk more human-like is they actually, they didn't have to to make it walk, you know, because it could normally, as they realized that humans shift their waist. So all they did is they had the robot just start moving at its waist and it gave the legs that human look. Wow. You know, it, and um, it's funny because that's things like that they, animators used to do is they really study how animals and people walk and just changing little movements make it look more realistic you yeah. know i was um at disney world and in disney world they had this um you remember how they used to have like the mr lincoln yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, but in this particular one it was a live show with one of those robots the white one oh not the one that looks like a, a human but it's the asimov yeah yeah, yeah. asimov yeah 
Uh, very impressive. I mean, throwing oh, balls to it and it would yeah. kick balls and run across the stage. I, it was it was a trip. There's actually a contest with those Asimo or some similar, and it's soccer matches. Mm. You know, they're not running around, but the robot will follow the ball and kick it, and then yeah. the other one will find the ball. It's, it's it is very it's, impressive. Yeah, it's it's getting crazy. I was going to say that uh, first one I ever saw was Mr. Lincoln. Yeah. That, that, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen that, but that, you know, his, his feet just stick to the ground and then he just, yeah. you know, I mean, you see it now and it looks pretty old technology, but uh, this is crazy. Yeah. So the other one I was going to do, and I think we'll show, are we going to have the bird one at the break? No, he's not going to do it on the break. He's going to do it during your show. Do you want to do it now uh, or in the next Yeah, segment? we can show it now. And uh, then I, there was just two things on it that I wanted to uh, add add to it once we see it but these are the birds are actually robots are actually flapping their wings and that's the one i think that's loaded up so are these real birds now these are robot birds robot birds and uh one of the things they're working on is actually mounting cameras in them uh-huh so they can fly them and do it and um oh okay here we go This is a bigger one. They've got some. Oh, that right. is just ridiculous. That's like almost grossly ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's. Wow. And these are autonomous birds? Yes. Wow. Now, this one is actually the shape is a lot different. There's one that they're doing at the. I think it's. Um, I don't think it's MIT. It's, uh, We'd learn obviously. from the birds how to move uh, the wing so and let's see. that this is may very be a different positive video to use uh, oh, this active torsion um, and uh, the second that thing is really that birds are very energy efficient so he so lo it looks like he's controlling something really a lightweight yeah uh, maybe they are flying these now and it's with the radio this one there was another one that just, uh, and two meters, i'm going to talk uh, about a little bit spend with that is really cool. You know what? I think he might just be steering it. It's flying. Oh, so it's pla it flaps its wings. It flaps its wings. And he just decides where he wants to go. But think of that. That is ridiculous. Look at his wide eyes. That's exactly yeah. how... I know that's how Larry looks when he's flying his... Yeah, he's got... Holy oh, crap! I'm in control now. <laughs> Disaster is yeah. at my fingertips. Yeah. But look wow. at he's flying around. I mean, that's pretty good control. Yeah, and he's got to think Inside about, like, um, if he, well, I want to say stalling, but if he goes too high, you know, yeah. he's going to lose his lift. Yeah, it is really nice. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that one. Um, Gosh. That so is... that one looks a little bit more like birds. And then I, I found some other ones. I'm not going to show those videos. But that... Basically the same thing. These ones have more framework, look look more like a robot because they don't have the exterior nice covering. But what they're de doing with this one is a um, oh, University of Maryland Robotics Center. Mm -hmm. is uh, They're actually making the wings, covering them with a super thin solar panels, but it's flexible. So it's actually using the flexible solar panels mm -hmm. as the wing texture but it's charging the batteries while they're so right now they don't have the ratio isn't quite worked out but it will so you'll be able to launch one of these birds and as long as it can hit sunlight it will recharge itself and just fly however long as it can that's keep pretty crazy char charged up y you know and they're they're looking pretty real because they said um they're making a smaller one that has a camera on it yeah for surveillance but they said they were out testing it and it looked real enough that they're flying this thing, and a hawk came oh. flying in and took it out. Ouch. <laughs> so it's it funny. Close enough to fool a hawk, you know, that, that's pretty good. So You, you know, I'm going to throw a little, throw a BS flag up, okay? All right. So when I was in high school, I, I was saw, seeing these things, and I decided I wanted to go to college for aerospace engineering because oh, right. I wanted to, to learn how to build planes and create things that oh, fly, right? right? I was so stressed 
for the for the five years that I was in college, just trying to pass my classes, I found zero enjoyment out of the whole thing. Oh, that's I mean, that sucks. The, the one time I found enjoyment was the um, the wind tunnel, but that was like a, a one week out of. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, you know, you look at this and people think, oh, that looks like so. No, I bet you these kids are just wanting to, you know, I just can't wait till I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Give me a boring job and I'll be happy. But uh, Well, most of these guys, yeah, it's once they've graduated and then they get into the what they call it, um, once they're out, out, they already have their degree, uh, but they're still working at the oh, university. Oh, yeah, that, so. it's the grad students, grad, right? Grad, yeah. yeah. So that's when they get to start playing with the cool that's, stuff. I think know? that's true, because yeah. I, I did not get to play with Yeah, because these cool. guys, you know, I've been here for 13 years, and it's like, you're like wow. dude, you're studying pretty slow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, that was a good segment for the first time, and I think it's time okay. for a break. Okay, and sounds I think good. what I like to do is talk, let's, let's kind of look a little bit more at these birds, see what else, uh, what's yeah, going on with these yeah. birds. Located along the western coast of North America lives a most extraordinary creature. A creature of incomparable beauty and grace. A creature that seems to defy the laws of physics and evolution. Coming to TVC Friday at 9, Plight of the Windy, Birds of Mystery. This is Icarus. She's a two-year-old North American windy, which is ironic as they're from Hong Kong originally. And uh, their scientific name is the Plasticus erraticus. This is the press canary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is that tough bird, an aggressive bird. It's known to be a pit bull of birds. Today, I only got the gloves on because he's tame. But some days, I need more than that. Whoa, easy. Bridges. Bridges. You know, when they do try to migrate to their nesting, whoa, 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 easy, easy. Try to migrate to their nesting areas. It's very difficult for them. And uh, those giant windmills you have out here, it, uh, they, a lot of them are killed there every year. We don't know why really it happens, just that it does. This is Sophie, Sophia Florinda Isabella. She loves it here. We are super excited. She, um, she loves the windmills and the rolling hills and and we're just glad that she can come out today and fly. Sophie, are you ready? Okay. Oh no, we're not in Livermore. The windies, they feed on the grapes from the wineries. Uh, they eat enough of these grapes and they become intoxicated. Uh, that's why they can't fly in formation like other birds. Um, and this unfortunately causes them to be susceptible to uh, other predators and poachers. And poachers are uh, evil. They think nothing of killing this bird uh, and disregarding all but its soft spine, uh, kind of like the sharks, uh, are killed for their fins to make soup. The mating ritual is something we know very little about. Uh, it's a naturally very timid and shy animal when it comes to this activity. It's only once the horizontal mambo is complete that we know that it even took place. Our organization rescued him, FTB, uh, it's for the birds. And we have fed and raised him by hand. And we know that in order for him to survive out in the wild, he has to learn how to catch his own food. So what we've been doing is bringing some mice out here and seeing how he does. This Friday at 9, Flight of the Windy, Birds of Mystery, only on TBC, the Bird Channel. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was, it didn't quite match the technology of that. Yeah, you just it was a little lower tech. A little lower technology. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is one of the films yeah. that was entered into the Poppy Jasper Film Festival in. Uh, in 2005 or 2006. 2006. So that's when we first kind of started. I thought first one was 2004. 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and this year is going to be our tenth Poppy Jasper Film Festival. That's right. Tenth year, which is awesome because I, a big percentage of film festivals uh, never last past like that's three right. years, something like that. Yep. So we've been. We're working pretty we hard. in there. Yep. Bob has actually been coordinating it, uh, all of this, and 
uh, you know, I've been working along with Jim and others to try to, to try to pull this off. Yeah. Uh, so the film festival is November 8th to 10th. And there's a 10th downtown? Da downtown. Hill and the Granada. The Granada, theater. right. And, uh, you know, in addition, and there they, we have, you know, again, I have a set of films. We have some workshops, people coming in to. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some cool workshops, too. Yeah. And uh, among other of the celebrities, we have Victor Miller uh, coming in. Now, Victor Miller has been part of our uh, board of directors for a while. Victor Miller is the original screenwriter for, or the screenwriter for the original Friday the Thirteenth yeah. movie, and he's again very clever, very entertaining too. And then he, to for, for years, he um, he wrote for soap operas, and he's actually oh. won numerous Emmy awards. So he's an Emmy award writer for those shows, and uh, yeah, he comes out and helps us out, you know, all the time. He's a great. Uh, That's a great, great resource. Guy to help for us. And he's a funny guy, so his. His workshops on writing are pretty good because right. he's, he's got a pretty good wit. <laughs> so. Exactly. So that'll be November 8th to 10th when we have the Papa Jasper Film Festival. And that's uh, for 2013, in case you're saying this in 2020 or something. We should have another show before then. No, yeah. Right? <laughs> At least I hope so. Anyway, uh, but you're right. Now, in addition, uh, on October 26th, and if you're watching this live, um, yeah. Or you, you'll see it again, repeat on Friday, October 26th, we're going to have a, uh, a best of the previous years showing. Okay, so that'll start around 7 o'clock. And we will actually, Victor Miller will come down here to, uh, uh, to help us with that. Kind of mingle. Right. So we're going to be showing from actually from 2006 to, to 2012. And so if... It is already past October 26th. You missed a good time. It's the best I can tell. Then you got to make it by November. Then, 8th, then 9th you have 10th, November yeah. 8th to 10th, right? But, uh, but again, we're looking for it. So anyway, but if it is before October 26th, please come on by at uh, uh, at seven o'clock. It's free. It's tough to beat that yep. price. It's gonna be know? free, and uh, you can come on in. We also, uh, again, we're having a reception for some of the. Some of our sponsors are 50 film friends. Yeah. And if so inclined, if you want to go ahead and contribute, it's uh, $100 for the 50 film friends. Uh, they get to get a special reception and then have a meet and greet with uh, Victor and for this. Got some other things for them and stuff. Right. And They're basically, they, um, those f friends who have joined so far have pretty much, they've been able to help us put on the, the uh, festival, right. really. Uh, between them and we have a couple other sponsors, some good ones, uh, the coffee shop, uh, right. Grinds and Vines, they did, uh, they're actually, we're going to have the workshops in the coffee shop in the side, which is great, you know, she's let us use that. That's right, and that's just two doors down from yeah, the Yeah, it's theater. right there, so it's all downtown, and then there's the, uh, um, we were talking about before, the cigar shop is right down there. So we've got the Granada, the cigar shop, which also sells wine, and it's got a bar right. in the back, beer. Right. And, and if stuff. you get past that, and then, then you yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you yeah. got the uh, the cafe, <laughs> cafe. It's a, it's a coffee shop. Grind and they also have beer and so wine there, right? Don't they? they sell beer and wine, coffee. Uh, I think they even have sandwiches and right. doing yeah. other stuff. So that should be pretty. Should be good. So again, yeah, it is, it's it's uh, going to be active here with the uh, with the Granada, yeah. and like I say, we have the fifty film friends, but. If we wanted to, if you felt so inclined to contribute, we can just continue the alliteration to make it 55 film friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we can, we'll go with that one. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, take, you know, we'll take any support we can get. Okay. So, one of the jobs that we have this weekend was to actually show the films, right? So, I needed to go ahead and gather a whole bunch of the DVDs, which had all the films on it from the last last in this case eight years pull off different films and right so i did i ripped them off using the roxio creator just uh, so now you when know. you put the dvd in you can select the area you want that's correct and it, with and roxio it, with right, roxio yeah. yeah and most of them are similar right. and then you pull it off and it creates a it creates an mpeg file mpg file, MP file. and um, and I know last week you tried to show the windy video, and it was as a result of what was pulled off of that. Oh. Of, 
of that, but for some reason we and weren't able to get the to, audio. Or? Didn't pull the audio correctly, so I because that, that setting and the. You know, I don't think so because I was able to play it on my machine. So I really think it is uh, an artifact of our switcher, our TriCaster. Oh, our, yeah, I think we've talked about that. Yeah, we have had troubles with that before. Certain flavors of MPEG files it has problems playing with. That's right. So um, anyway, so I converted it to an AVI, and that's what you saw here and, uh, and before. So, and then, again, that's an example of one of the films that's going to be shown, uh, shown on the 26th, October 26th. Uh, but then, you know, the question goes up. If previously, we've always, well, up until last year, we have always created a DVD. And then you throw the DVD into a DVD player, send it to the projector, and that's what we project yeah. onto the screen. In the, in and we have to make a, uh, make a DVD of each film block. So we take the films and put them onto one DVD right. and play that. Um, That's right. That but, but then last year, and with the help of Jim and others, we did have a, a section for a, uh, a Sunday afternoon, like a matinee, right, where we would play some cheesy old film. And then uh, in between, we would do an intermission like you would have seen at, either at your theater or at your drive-in, you know, where you have... Dancing Coke Cup, you yeah, know, if you, um, I think. If you come to my computer, oh, okay. This yeah. is one of them we got, and and I pulled these from, um, what is that site? Archive.org. Archive Archive.org, and so, you know, we played. They have these loaded up there, and you're free to download them. They're public domain, and sure. so if you went to theaters when you were, well, if you're my age, but yeah, or my age, be, yes. This is what they used to show, or the old drive-ins. Exactly. You know, they'd show that. Right. So we played some of this just to be a little nostalgic, and, you know. And, uh, yeah, that was dancing hot dogs and those kinds of things. Yeah. Yes. Oh, don't drive away. <laughs> so, so that's that's what I was just wanted to show what right. you were talking about. So this is playing in a player. In right, in a player from a computer. So we wanted to investigate how to take. You know, your video in a player, and we want to put a, a you know, we're going to, we have blocks of films, right? These are all short films, 30 minutes or less, but we want to put it in a block so it goes for an hour, an hour and a half for each session that we show. So we said, all right, why don't we, we need a way that we can go ahead and create a playlist, we will, to, to have all these uh, videos come together, and then just go ahead and play that. Yeah. And then we go walk away, go to the cigar shop, and and it gives you the wine, come back play. in an yeah, hour, yeah. and then we see what, uh, how it's doing, right? So, uh, so anyway, we took a look, and Bob said, well, there is a player called VLC, uh, which I'm not too familiar with, and you're going to see that in a second. Yeah, this is a, a I like this player, because it'll play, um, a friend showed me this one years ago, and they keep updating, but it'll play pretty much anything. Okay. I mean, it's, and it's a free download, you know. Um, I Again, like it because it's a little it. simpler than, you know, you get Windows Media Player and it has all these bells and whistles. And, but to me, it's, I, I, I don't know why, like I said, I like simple. Okay. No, I, we, do, so we, got, we do simple. So, okay. So what I have, um, and whenever you want to come to, to my computer, I'll just start out with Windows six. Explorer. These are a set of files. We got six. Six hmm. minutes. Okay. We have, uh, these are a set of files that uh, are actually promos from previous years. Okay, so he, this is just getting Windows Explorer. And if, we, if you go ahead and we'll, we'll take a look at the VLC media player, which again, you get it for free. And, uh, and you start it up, it comes up with some kind of road cone, which you know, I don't quite understand what that is, but, but why they do that. But then you just have a way that you can go ahead and um, and move. I think you could just even just drop, right? select them all and drag them all right. over. I just wanted to throw in a couple, so you don't want to. Yeah. Too many. All right. And then we can view the playlist. And actually, this is going to go ahead and start. I think. And okay. what's. And what's cool about the playlist like this is that you can um, rearrange the order of them. You know, before we had to, you know, burn a disc so they were 
Uh, and right. one of the things was we had we had different blocks, so we would put some films in one, and they would duplicate. And one of the things that we just thought that would be kind of cool for this um, doing is that we can actually run stuff from a computer, and you know everything's off of one place out of one machine. That's right. No, we only played the one. That was kind of interesting here. Yeah. Take a look at the playlist. Maybe they only put one. So that's the playlist. Whatever. Right. And we'll just go ahead and look to play this. Yep. Now go ahead Still and go back to it. that playlist. Yeah. For some reason, it didn't start in the first one. No, that was the first one. It was highlighted, probably. Yeah. So if you but drag the order, drag that one to the top and see if it'll... Well, no, that was the one that was playing. Oh, okay. I don't know why this one doesn't play. Okay, and then you go to full screen here. Oh, there's Victor Miller. So... Oh, I don't think we have audio for that. So. But that's okay, um, so that's how we wanted to. We're gonna right uh, try to do this, and then you can save the playlist as a. Uh, now you'll see this is probably pretty short. It'll automatically. Yeah, let's just see if it goes to the next one. Hopefully, it will. Right. Yeah. And this is real. This is from last year, I believe. Yeah, yeah I think actually it was 2011. We yeah. had that. We had a, a special showing. That is 2011. Oh, this is. Yeah. So this is the so uh, this is, second. So this is the second film. show. Yeah. Right. So anyway, there's just a set of set of promos that we have. But it, okay, so I guess it's the, the key thing is that you're just creating a playlist. You can either. Um, and what's cool for us, if you show, go back and show your, uh, where you have the playlist and you, oh, you already saved one, right? Uh, yes, you did. So what we'll be able to do is take a block, say we call it block one, right. and I'm put the playlist in there, and then all and we have to do is, is click on that, and it's going to start our show. Right, so this is another promo from, was it 2009 right. maybe? Is it? Now when you clicked on that, that, that it was just automatic, start. you just double clicked right. on it and it was on the, the desktop. So, and this is again a little piece of yeah, video. This is that a promo that, that we made a couple of years ago. And this one's funnier when you hear it because the sound is, uh, right. it, it's kind of important because the, the music changes with the emotions of the uh, right of what that she's doing so it's it's more dramatic when you hear the music right so. what a waste of popcorn i don't know <laughs> i know and that took us about <laughs> 15 <laughs> shots to get the popcorn to be able to throw it up so uh, sort of yeah. all right okay so that's uh yeah, I just wanted to kind of go through that, you know, as far as uh, building a playlist, then, uh, and again, I was going to go and play a second one. Okay. So just something that in case you wanted to do, do you impress your friends and neighbors that they come over, you know, you can hook it up to the TV, and, and you can go ahead and sure. play a bunch of videos, yeah. and um, they can get to, to hate you as if you were going to do your, you All know, right, cool. your so home I, I, movies. Right? Yeah. So I think we're going to take a break, and... Uh, don't All forget right. to come to the film festival of poppyjasperfilmfest.org. That org yes. is important. Well, .com will go to it now, but you might hear why uh, that, that can be yeah. an important thing yeah. <laughs> later on. Yeah. Now, this other video is, another, is a video from 2009, and I didn't even see if it won any award, but it's one of the cleverest videos I think I've yeah, seen it was a in good, a while. Yeah. So we can go ahead and play Fortissimo.
Okay, well, once again, uh, this is another one of the entries into the Poppy Jazz from Film Festival that was really just pretty cute, three minute, three minute video. Yeah, that must have been a lot of work. I mean, that's animation stuff isn't easy. Yeah, it, just to get the facial expressions and everything. Yeah, it's just, just amazing what's, um, what they can do. Anyway, so we're going to have about an hour and a half showing on October 26th. One of, in fact, one of the films that was entered in Poppy Jazz Film Festival in 2011 called Time Freak, was actually nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, didn't make it, so we'll be showing that at that, um, at that time as well. October 26th, that's coming up. I know that. That's why hopefully you, um, hopefully you didn't miss, uh, miss it already. It's, oh well. But yeah, it is. It's this Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, look, I know what I'm doing Saturday. There you go. You gotta come by. I, and I'm, I'm gonna be doing some filming in the studio ahead of time, so um, I'll probably come here, do some filming here in the studio. 7 p.m. Oh, well, I'm not going to stay in the studio that long, huh? I, you may have to come back. I yes, might have to come back. have to go back. Okay. Well, all right. I don't know. Did you have any other things? I just had some kind of news items that I just wanted to go through. Then just yeah, I, I'll talk a little bit about something that I learned this week. So, um, and I, I don't know if you knew this one either, so this might be a little bit of education for you. When you create a domain, there's, um, there's a th couple of things that have to go on in, behind the scenes in order for your website to work. And um, one is, well, I'm actually going to ask Bob if he wouldn't mind adjusting the tolerance on the green screen, because right now I've got this disappearing shirt, and I don't want you to actually see through it, because uh, I might be wearing something under there that you don't want to look at. You have to go a preview on camera three. But anyways, while Bob's doing that, um, what I wanted to talk about was so this concept of domain names. So if you have a domain name, like, for example, poppyjesterfilmfest.org, right. the, the first thing you need to do is you need to take the domain name and tell the registrar where it's hosted at. They call that an A record or at record. And it's usually an IP address. Well, it, actually, I shouldn't say it's usually. It always is an IP address. And that tells the world that when somebody types poppyjesterfilmfest.org, it says, ah, Go to this server and give the, ask them for the website. Right. Now, Bob said, you know, I don't want to um, 
get pe have people get lost because <coughs> sometimes people will get type poppyjasperfilmfest.com. Right. So what Bob did was he got another domain, poppyjasperfilmfest.com. Now, he, he did the correct thing and he forwarded that domain to dot org. Right. So if somebody types poppyjasperfilmfest.com, it goes to dot org. Now, back when forwarding was, was relatively new, one of the techniques that they created was this thing called masking. And what that would do is it would hide the dot org and it would mask the dot com. So if you type poppyjasperfilmfest.com, it would have the dot com at the end and it wouldn't change it. So when you're seeing the website, even though you're really at the dot org website, it's going to mask the dot org with dot com. Okay. And then if you wanted to go to the, to let's say the about page, it would mask the dot org with dot com. So it would be poppyjasperfilmfest.com slash about. Does that kind of make sense? It's kind of like right. hiding the dot org. And the reason why people would do that is if they had a lot of different domains, like for example, make money today or earn money on TV or all these different domains, they could right. have one website, but the visitors would think they're visiting different domain names. So this is like a clever way of okay. using multiple So it was domains. more than just a dot .com, dot .org, it would mask the which, other which, the actual No, it's, name? It's, the doc, it's, it's the whole name would be masked, right? It okay. just so happens that Bob pushed a Put Poppy it's Jasper Film Fest, right? Okay. So yes, the whole domain would be masked. And um, really, it was a clever thing in the beginning. In today's environment, though, web pages don't exist. There, there aren't HTML files just sitting out there waiting for someone to call me. You know, hey, I'm, I'm, come download me. Instead, what there are are PHP scripts that are being called. And when the PHP script is called, like index.php, it will take information about what the person's trying to do and generate the page for them. Okay. So, like for example, on my website, if you went to bluemarkey.com slash about, there really is no about page. What's happening is, is that word about is being passed to a PHP script, and that PHP script says, I know exactly what page this person wants, and it will create the, the HTML right then and there. So it creates the HTML on the fly. So on it isn't like it just grabs the entire page. That's about right, page. it creates it on the fly. Okay. Here's the problem. When masking is turned on, that script says, Who's .com? I never even heard of .com. Right. And so I'll while pass that- Pass on to the next whatever it is, right? <laughs> just, you just ignore it. That's right. And so um, what was happening when, when uh, we were trying to work on the site is we inadvertently had typed in poppyjasperfilmfest.com months ago in our browser, and our browser remembered it. Okay. So every time we wanted to go to poppyjasperfilmfest.org, we saw it autofill, and we're like, well, that's the right one not really looking at it and seeing that it was the .com, and we click it, and we couldn't get to the other pages on the site because the so script the was looking, the, needs the .org. Okay. The PHP script was built around the .org. So the long story short is masking isn't as uh, credible as it, as it used to be because okay. there's so many different things now that are dependent upon the domain name. All right, now the masking, how do you turn it on? And probably more importantly, how do you turn it off? Uh -huh. right. So when you buy a domain name like from GoDaddy, um, one of the options is you can forward the domain name, and that, they, that is really a good thing to do. And in the forwarding, an option, well, one of them you might have heard is, is, is it a 403 redirect or something like that where it's permanent or temporary? Okay. Um, so, the, so what those means is sometimes you're doing work on your site and you want to temporarily redirect it. So you don't want Google to to uh, think that this is your regular site. So when you put a temporary redirect on, it tells all the search engines, hey, you know, don't pay attention to this stuff for now. Okay. But a permanent redirect would tell Google, yeah, this is my new site. All right, and this is a flag on there somewhere, right? It's, it's little, little check marks. Right. And then one of the check marks is also turn masking on or off. And that's in your registrar. So for our, us, it was GoDaddy, but DreamHost or wherever you bought your domain name from. But now when you turn masking on, do you have to indicate what you want to mask? I mean, the, the .com, the .org, or in the example that you gave where you had uh, buy my stuff and buy somebody else's stuff and you know something in the name, do you have to specifically mention what you want masked? So what, what masking would do is, let's, I'll use a, a, another real world example. mhat.tv is the real domain name, right? Right. And I want, when anybody types jimcarrillo.com, I want them to really go to mhat.tv. So if I turn masking on, they would never know that the domain name was mhat.tv. It would just say jimcreo.com, 
jimcreo.com slash about, jimcreo.com slash schedule. So it's the domain name, that full domain name, which is what the mask applies to. So it's uh, whatever you're forwarding becomes that mask. OK. In any case, this is set up with the registrar. Right? With the registrar. OK. Yeah. So good. Um, I think long story short, lesson learned is masking has much further implications than we ever imagined. We thought it was just a clever way of kind of hiding where domain you're actually at. But now websites don't always work if you do it that way. So, so that things, was my lesson. Things went to never, never land. Yeah, 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 I guess. That was a hard one to troubleshoot, too. I would imagine. Yeah. You know, it would I mean, uh, pounding the keys on that one. Especially with, uh, because it was poppyjasperfilmfest.org.com, the whole domain name was the same. It was just three letters. Right. And it was those three letters that we really had to be focused on. That, uh, all right, so All right, what, what, did, what news did you see this week? Well, besides healthcare, please. There's got yeah, to be did you want to? I've been trying to log on. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Since we started. No, <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm not going to go into that. Have you tried to log on? I have not. I have I, not either, so I don't know yeah. if it's working or not. But uh, I was tempted, but I didn't. But, and of course, in California, they have covered California oh, if you're really right. serious about doing that and apparently that seems to be working a lot better yeah we're in yeah that's right we're in the right state huh? right that's true yeah one of the so but yeah i didn't even even try to deal with it um yeah just a couple of things i noticed just kind of looking about where we are with tv you know and, and uh some of the trends that, are, that seem to be happening one of them is that there seems to be more and more of this tv everywhere notion which is that now they would like to have you see TV on your mobile device. And, um, and H HBO has HBO Go, and Epix has its own thing, and ESPN is now doing it. And I, again, I don't know if you really would like to watch TV on your, your phone <laughs> to, for, for too long. You know, um, and especially with HBO, where you know you, I'm not going to be watching Game of Thrones on something that's real big. You know, <laughs> right? yeah. So I, I don't understand it. I can understand it for more of the immediate kind of thing, uh, you know, the uh, the news or the sports or something to that effect. But uh, anyway, so they, but there seems to be more and more of a of a push to that. Like you just see more and more people getting getting into that. I, I would say beware. I, for me, my phone has a data plan that can run out, which is. And it'll just suck up your data plan, mm. you know, because you're streaming uh, live yeah, video. Yeah, that will. So, uh, so forget about that. Another thing, trend that I noticed was well, they're talking about the graying of America for broadcast TV, where they did a check here for some of the latest shows that, that were out. And one of the more popular shows is Ironside. Ironside is a remake of a, what, 1970s? Uh, crime procedural, and it's on it's on the broadcast networks now, and they did the median age of who's watching it, you know, right the, the halfway point, and it was something like 62. So they say well, all the old dudes are kind of watching broadcast TV, and watching some of the some of the old, you know, what's ever on CBS, NBC, uh, et cetera, Where they found the median age for somebody who's watching Breaking Bad, which is a cable show is about 32. So are you saying that it's the broadcast TV specifically that's green? Uh, yes, as well as, uh, uh, yes, the, in other words, more of the people are, are looking and using cable, and I would imagine satellite as well, right, but as, and more of the on-demand kind of thing. Uh, so they're using that at a younger age, and then the people who, I guess it makes sense, who maybe don't have cable, are doing some cord cutting, and they're trying to cut back, or are they just looking for over-the-air broadcasts? Mm -hmm. Are looking at, um, at at the older ones? So, again, just a uh, just a thought. It's also kind of a, a trend for those who want to do binge watching of shows, because the uh, again, well, you'll find out that you know, somebody like Net Netflix, right? They mm -hmm. used to go ahead and they'll just release the entire season right away, and they start and look to do binge. Um, I, d I did that with that. Um, HBO's The Newsroom. Yes. I, I like that. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then there's the other one from Netflix, which is... Um, they have the House of Cards. Oh, and I, I, I've, got, I've got a Netflix account that's about 
gosh, eight years old. I got it right that first two years that Netflix came out. Right. And um, it's like four bucks a month. Oh. It's really cheap. And they finally sent us an email a couple months ago that said, um, you will no longer be able to stream video with this account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So I can't watch House of Cards anymore. Yeah. Well, you may want to, what is it, $8 or something like that, yeah, I think it is uh, now. That's a 100% increase. I know. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. No question about it. Oh, boy, but I know. Uh, um, also, a couple other trends. They say more, uh, more people are using DVRs than before. And they even found out that uh, there's a show called Blacklist which is, uh, I think it's a CBS show, and it has uh, James Spader on it. And they're, they're finding out that people who watch it when it's, it's broadcast time, they're finding out that people are using the DVRs, and it's almost increased 50% a week later because they're measuring now who's doing DVR. So what happens is that people are not watching it at that time. They're watching it at some point later on. So what started out as maybe number 30 in the ratings bounced out to number 15 or number 10 because of people that are, that are looking at the DVR later on. So all these people that are whining about the government and Google tracking everything that we do, what they don't realize is that the cable companies and, and satellite companies are tracking what we watch? Exactly. Ah. It's, the, it's the Nielsen of the NSA or ah. vice versa, whatever it is, because that's really what, uh, what they are tracking now. Yeah. So. Uh, another thing, just a uh, quick notice to talk about Netflix. You know, Netflix has been taking the, the, the latest, you know, the, the first run shows, and they've been showing it. Now, there's people like NBC, CBS that are saying, hey, wait a second, why don't I have them go to my website and see the first run shows rather than giving it right to Netflix, Netflix and, uh, and losing that yeah, revenue. Like, Hello. So, so yeah, so you're going to see probably in the, in the future where you probably get everything but the latest season on Netflix. Yeah. And then uh, the, uh, the networks are going to do their own yeah. uh, on demand and Netflix like streaming. Yeah. So again, just some of the trends that I've, uh, that I've noticed. Well, so some of the things that you said, uh, by the way, I, um, just for the folks out there in TV land watching us, so remember when you had mentioned about watching something on your phone and you want to watch your data plan? Yes. Always connect to Wi-Fi when you're at home. Or like here yes. at work, um, my phone is always connected to Wi-Fi. Never waste your data plan when you're at a place where there's Wi-Fi. Absolutely. So, yes. Uh, yeah. gosh, that's I do the same thing here. Yeah. With, uh, so yeah. what do you want to watch? I know. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be that. But you know, I, um, one of the things that I learned, I, I think I would say I learned it as an adult, is that the hardest times in life are when you have choices. So like when I was in the military and we got to choose where our next base was, I was like, oh my gosh, it could go anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Or when we got to buy a home and we got to choose which home we bought. So the more choices that you have, the harder life is. When your life becomes mundane and just day after day, right. it, it becomes much easier. And I apply that to television. I, I don't want unlimited choices. I, I don't have the capacity in my brain for unlimited choices. I just want five channels to tell me what to watch. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I'll look between those five channels. This is the one I'm going to watch. So I don't know yeah. if I'm the, the right generation to take that movies on demand because there's just so many choices out there. Yeah, I know. It really is. Uh, okay. Well, hey, just one more quick thing I heard today is that apparently Microsoft is getting involved with Google Glass or a, a Google Glass-like product so they're actually looking into it uh, and apparently they are working with for prototypes right now but they're trying to they're trying to get ready in case Google Glass or whatever is the watch and that kind of thing in case it takes off they're trying to position themselves so that they can go ahead and uh, and be part of that so I never used Google I don't I haven't seen anybody or known anybody that had yeah. Google Glass but it's quite limited right now but well we'll keep an eye on that there you go just another thing to another little bit of nerd stuff yeah right well, it was a good having you today on Nerd News Now. I'm glad we had the time with you and look forward to seeing you next week. That's right. Okay. Have a good one.